The engine of a rocket is often considered the holy grail of the rocket because it's certain to provide a powerful source of energy to lift the rocket off the ground and penetrate space. In a field where every ounce matters, any error in the engine can affect the entire flight of the rocket. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Raptor engine, introduced as a powerful and reusable engine, will provide energy for the Starship launch system to dominate the journey to Mars. But the reality is that we haven't yet seen it do these things. It hasn't yet achieved perfection through its testing. What's SpaceX's Raptor problem? And how's SpaceX going to fix it? Stay tuned as we get into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. As we know, SpaceX is a leading private enterprise in the field of space and is one of the few companies that's developed rockets rapidly to this extent. Their Starship spacecraft is the most anticipated vehicle to date and is believed to play a significant role in the interplanetary exploration, particularly the conquest of Mars. To achieve this, the first thing SpaceX needs to do is ensure the reliability of the Starship's Raptor engines, considered the heart and soul of a space vehicle. In a recent significant test for Booster 9 in preparation for its second orbital launch, four Raptor engines were found to be non-operational. There have been predictions from some individuals that the issue causing the shutdown of these four Starship Raptor engines was water ingress. However, that is entirely incorrect. For a long time, SpaceX has achieved success in developing waterproof engines capable of multiple ignitions, as demonstrated by the engines used in the Dragon capsule that have undergone numerous launches. Besides, this was the first static fire of a high-thrust engine with an electric TVC. In fact, electric TVC makes Raptors independent entities, unaffected by a common chain. Therefore, the shutdown of the four Raptor engines can be attributed to individual issues with each one of them. This indicates that the problem might stem from the Raptor engines themselves, fundamentally suggesting that they're still not entirely reliable to deliver optimal performance for the Starship. During the initial orbital flight of the Starship, an occurrence unfolded as a minimum of eight engines were unexpectedly deactivated, encompassing both the engines that shut down initially and those that ceased operation after liftoff. In addition to abrupt shutdowns, the Raptors have also encountered instances of explosions during prior testing. Notably, in late July 2022, an explosion shook the prototype Booster 7. Fortunately, this explosion didn't lead to its destruction. Around this time, Elon mentioned that in the future, the company won't do a spin start test with all 33 engines at the same time. Could this be a reason for the recent static fire test where we were missing four Raptors? We're not entirely certain about this prediction, but it is a possibility. But I wouldn't worry too much about this. Remember SpaceX encountered countless challenges with igniting the Merlin engines in the early years, particularly from 04 to 09. They overcame many difficulties during the Falcon 1 era, yet still faced issues during Falcon 9 development. By the time they reached Falcon Heavy, they'd been tinkering with the engine construction for about 15 years. Raptor was developed earnestly in about half that time. Raptors are more intricate and much higher performing than Merlin, so it's not surprising they encounter teething problems. It could also be because they can shut down, so their shutdown limits might be more closely controlled to avoid severe mishaps during flight. However, that logic only works for the first one or two times. There could be many reasons for that, so we have to wait for an official statement from SpaceX. Let's keep confidence that they've got a plan. But to be honest, it's precisely because the Raptor is a truly unique and astonishingly powerful engine that it's inadvertently posed challenges for itself. The first thing that challenges the Raptor is the complexity of its engineering design. While the specific impulse is higher, it'll pose difficulties for the engine. The SpaceX Raptor is designed to supply its spacecraft with kinetic energy at a rate of 11 million horsepower, the equivalent of four Hoover dams, generated by an engine weighing approximately one and a half tons. Within a Raptor's combustion chamber, methane and oxygen burn at temperatures hot enough to melt its walls, at pressures exceeding those in scuba cylinders. The exhaust is expelled at a speed 10 times the speed of sound. At the heart of all chemical, or more generally, all thermal rocket engines, is a simple and familiar thermodynamic principle. When a gas is heated, it expands. Chemical rockets burn fuel and oxidizers inside a combustion chamber. This imparts an enormous amount of heat to the gases, causing them to expand rapidly. In other words, an explosion happens. In a rocket engine, this explosion occurs continuously as fuel and oxidizer are pumped in. Essentially, a rocket's an efficient way of converting the fuel's chemical energy into kinetic energy. When the propellant's combusted, propellant energy is converted into thermal energy.
because the engine resists the explosion, the gas reaches high pressure. As the gas flows through the nozzle, it exchanges thermal and pressure energy for kinetic energy. In other words, the explosion pushes back against the combustion chamber and nozzle, forcing the rocket forward. To increase the thrust of the rocket, one can add more engines or increase the rate of propellant consumption. However, this won't improve the rocket's delta-5. In a nutshell, delta-5 is the ability of a rocket to change its velocity, which in turn determines how difficult of a mission it can perform. Adding engines decreases delta-5 due to their added mass. Following the rocket equation, there are only two ways to improve delta-5. Carry more fuel or improve specific impulse. For SpaceX, the method that engineers often employ to increase the power of the engine is to enhance that specific impulse. To achieve this, they've increased the combustion temperature of the Raptor engine when they ignite it. This will increase the amount of energy available to the gases, causing their molecules to move faster, improving the engine's exhaust velocity. High temperatures can generally be achieved by using a more energetic fuel oxidizer combination. However, higher temperatures also demand that the Raptor engine be constructed with more robust materials and a more powerful cooling system to prevent engine burnout. This implies that the Raptor must possess a high level of durability to endure multiple repetitive cycles in line with its reusability criteria. Furthermore, engine erosion also happens. Corrosion is an especially serious problem with oxygen. Oxygen is already highly reactive in normal conditions. As the temperatures and pressures found inside a rocket engine, it'll enthusiastically combust with almost anything, including a wide variety of metals. If the combustion mixture has an excess of oxygen, it's known as oxidizer-rich combustion or burning lean. If the engine alloys aren't designed to resist the ensuing oxidation, the oxygen will begin combusting with the engine itself. This occurred during the Starship SN8 tests due to low pressure in the header fuel tank, a small auxiliary fuel tank meant exclusively for landing. The combustion chambers were starved of fuel. This meant that there was too much oxygen in the engine. The hot, oxygen-rich gases began reacting with the copper in the engine's alloys, producing the brilliant green flame that was observed during the landing burn. The next challenge for the Raptor engine is obtaining the Certified for Flight license. What does Certified for Flight entail for a reusable engine? If the criteria for flight certification for a reused engine are the same as those for a new engine, it implies that all the same tests, beginning at the component level, are conducted as they would be for a new engine. You've likely heard various anecdotes about the Space Shuttle main engines, or SSMEs, needing to be rebuilt between flights. While many of these statements are or were untrue, the inspections required for an engine were indeed extensive. We often lean toward a conservative approach, which involved replacing a component if inspection results were ambiguous. Following that, we conducted various checkout tests on the replaced components and performed a series of comprehensive simulation tests on the entire engine. These tests closely replicated the initial checkout tests for a new engine. As a result, the Certification of Flight Readiness, or COFR, for the SSMEs could then be signed and validated contractually, based on subjecting the reused engine to essentially a full set of new engine checkout tests. To summarize, the engine was, and still is, fully capable of numerous firings from the outset making it inherently reusable without requiring any additional modifications. However, the flight certification process for a reused engine had to meet the same rigorous standards as those applied to a new engine. These standards of rigor were formally defined in the contract between the U.S. government and the supplier of SSME, which in this case was Rocketdyne Division of Rockwell International Corporation. And that's all for today's episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it and picked up some new facts. Please let us know what you think in their comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.